Hi, my name is Tari Papavanamas. I'm an infectious disease fellow at the University of Cape Town at Kritiske Hospital. And today I'm going to illustrate how to take a blood culture from a patient in a sterile manner. Okay, so there's a few things that you need to have. So one of them is your blood culture sterile pack. Um, if you don't have that, you could use a dressing pack. Then you'll need a 10 ml syringe or 20 ml syringe. Um, the best is to put in 10 mils into the blood culture bottle because that is the ratio that is needed for the medium as well as for the blood. Uh, if you put in too little, then your yield of picking up the microorganisms will be reduced. And then you'll need your need needle, whether it's a 21 gauge, 22 gauge, it doesn't really mat matter. If you want to use a vacutainer method, that's also fine. I'm not going to illustrate that in this video. And then obviously you need your blood culture bottle. Please ensure before you take the blood that um, the expiry date is okay. And then you need your sterile gloves. Then you're going to use, uh, you need to have your hand-based uh, sanitizer, which is alcohol-based. Uh, your skin disinfectant, um, in this case I'm using chlorexidine alcohol. Um, what other, whatever other antiseptic you have, that's fine. It depends on the drying time um, of which one you use. It's important that it dries completely for it to work to kill the microorganisms on the skin and then you need a surface disinfectant to clean the table before you are busy and then obviously your shops container is important okay so you need to then go and identify yourself to the patient introduce yourself and tell them what you're going to be doing and make sure that you're taking blood on the correct patient okay once you have done that you can start preparing your table so importantly you need to do Hand hygiene, put one to three mils on your hands, start with your fingertips, and this should be done for 20 seconds. It's important that you do it for the correct amount of time because you need the alcohol solution to um, dry to remove the microorganisms that are on your hands. For the rest of the video, I won't be doing the whole 20 second thing, um, so you can always refer to this part of the video again. Okay, then I'm going to clean the area with my surface disinfectant. I'm going to open up my sterile pack. Open it slowly, they sometimes tear. If they do tear, it's not a big problem. Just try and go as slowly as possible to, to open the area. As you can see, mine is tearing. <laughs> Okay, once that is done, you can then take out your red bin, open it up, put it in an area which is accessible. All right, and then you're going to open up your blood culture uh, top over there, and you can take out the blue. There's two parts, there's the dark blue and there's the light blue. The dark blue will repel liquids, whereas the light blue will help with absorption. So put the dark blue at the bottom. Doesn't matter if the whole thing doesn't open, as long as you've got an area which allows you to work on. And then you can get to your syringe. Open that up. Open up your needle. Please do it slowly, don't rip it open. If you rip it open, there's a risk that you'll contaminate the area. And then opening up your sterile gloves as well. Okay, once that is done, you're going to do your hand hygiene again because you need to uh, touch the patient and you're going to put the tourniquet on, palpate your vein, I'm happy where my vein is, and then you're going to put your antiseptic into the well over here, onto your cotton wool. All right. Once again, you're going to do your hand hygiene before you put on your gloves. Make sure your hands are completely dry. Otherwise, you're going to struggle to put on um, the gloves. 
Okay, so put the gloves on in a sterile manner. Right, you're then going to clean the area. So importantly, you pass from your left hand to your right hand. It doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, and then you just clean the area in a circular motion. I try and clean a big area just to make sure everything is clean, and then discard left hand to right hand. Clean as much as possible in a circular motion. Then pass again left hand to right hand. Clean the area. Discard. And then you need to clean the top of the blood culture bottle. Now what you need to do is you're going to take out your um, green paper over here. And some of them might not have this. So what you can do is you can even have the blue one and put it under the patient's arm. The reason why... The green one is quite nice as you can see it's got a hole in the middle so it allows you to uh, put it over the vein of the patient okay once that is done you can connect your needle your syringe please don't prick yourself so it's important that you don't go and palpate the vein again you've already identified your vein in this case so what you need to do now anchor the vein with your thumb and then you can enter into the area in a swift motion and then as explained before you take about 10 mils of blood per blood culture bottle okay and then you can undo your tourniquet over here and then you're going to take a cotton please don't put the cotton on top of the needle there's a risk that you're going to puncture uh, your finger you're going to get a needle stick injury and also you don't want to contaminate the needle which you're then going to put in your blood culture bottle so what I do is I quickly remove this and then I put that on top and then I apply pressure obviously and then you can put this directly into the blood culture bottle okay now what you can do in the meantime while it's filling up is you can cover the area with a tape and then you can pack up all your things and discard. Once that is done, I am then going to remove my needle. Okay, importantly, some people would have said previously to um, take off the needle and put a clean needle in before putting it into the blood culture bottle. That just puts you at increased risk of getting a needle stick injury so we don't advocate that and what you can do is you can close it and then some people would also advocate removing the needle and putting the syringe in the red bin and the needle inside the uh, shops container we don't advocate that you don't want to get a needle stick injury just discard everything directly into the shops container now once you've done with that, you need to swirl the blood culture, so you need to mix the media with the blood. And if you want to know how much blood to put, for example, you weren't too sure, what you could always do is you can look at the blood, blood culture bottle and you can see where the full line is. Okay, and obviously if you've got other tubes to fill, what you do is you first fill in the blood culture and then you fill in your other tubes, for example, your yellow top or your red top or whatever you, you, need, to, you, you need to test. Okay. We'll come back to that now. All right, so what you can then do is do your hand hygiene. And also very important that you thank the patient for allowing you to take blood on them. And what you're now going to do is you need to label the blood culture bottle. Okay. So when labeling, as you can see, there is an area to put your sticker on. So when you put your sticker, Make sure you don't cover the bottom of the blood culture bottle. The reason being is that the, um, the, the machine that it goes into detects growth by looking at the bottom of the blood culture. So you don't want to cover the area. And secondly, you don't want to cover the barcode area either because the, comp the, the problem is in the machine won't be able to read the barcode. So your options are to stick it along the area over there or the other option is to stick it right at the top over, the, over there just like that okay and then obviously you need to send it to the lab as soon as possible when you fill in your forms 
it's also important to state a number of things. So the date and the time the blood culture was done, why it was done. For example, did you do it for a community acquired pneumonia versus a meningitis? Because the microorganisms can be different in those cases. The microbiology laboratory need to know what those, what, what, where the site is because then they can decide on what um, plates to use and how to better identify uh, the microorganisms. And then once again, you've also got to say, is it a peripheral line uh, and where it was taken from? For example, it was taken from the left forearm of the patient. Once that is done, you're then going to go into the patient's notes and in the patient's notes, you're going to write blood culture done, the time it was taken and where it was taken. And that's how you do a blood culture. Thank you very much.